Good morning. Thank you. It's good to see all of you, and uh, welcome to those watching on Facebook. I made a few adjustments again this week to the video feed, so hopefully it works better. Also, you may have noticed there's a second microphone there. <coughs> That's uh, to try to pick up more of the congregational sound. So if you're watching online, you don't just hear me all the time. Um, eventually, we'd like to look into putting a microphone in the church, like a hanging mic, to pick up the sound. But the sound technician said this would be a, an interim uh, step. So that's what that's there for. <coughs> So just a few things uh, to uh, make note of. The, uh, our communion practice will remain as it has been the last several weeks with everybody you know, staying standing at the rail and kind of spread out a little bit. Uh, the one change is we have uh, brought back the common cup, the chalice. So if you'd like uh, the chalice, then as before, just... Um, don't take the individual cup, and I'll come back around with the chalice. And we do have alcohol there in that little container, so I'll use that to wipe the cup and so forth. Other than that, the practice um, is the same as it's been the last few weeks. Also, next um, week, next weekend, uh, Mark Peters and his family will be visiting Grace. Um, as I'm sure many of you know, Mark is a member of our church and is at the seminary in Fort Wayne, Indiana. He just finished his second year, and so I invited him to come and visit us. And so he'll be the preacher. I'll be here uh, as well. It's nice for me because uh, not only do I get a Sunday from off, I guess you'd say, from preaching uh, and let him preach to you all, but uh, this coming week, um, actually this afternoon, I'm going to be traveling with some of our youth and uh, our youth leaders to Kentucky to visit the Ark Encounter and Creation Museum. So uh, we'll get back late Wednesday night. So please keep us in your prayers uh, for safe travel and a good time uh, down there. Also in our prayers today, uh, please continue to pray for Tom Clark. Uh, he is still hospitalized at Freighter in Milwaukee. I was able to see him yesterday, so... That was encouraging. Um, at least at Freighter Hospital, they're allowing patients one visitor a day. So that's a change from before when you couldn't uh, really have visitors at all. So um, he appreciates your prayers, and he's hoping to be able to uh, return back probably to a, a rehab facility uh, soon um, down in our area. Also, uh, please continue to pray for Kurt Woodward's son, Jackson, as he recovers from surgery. Uh, for Walter Bone, who suffered a shoulder injury. Walter's here, so uh, but as you've probably seen already, his arm in a sling. We'll keep Walter in our prayers. Um, Wes and Becky Gardner's son, Derek, who suffered from heat exhaustion down in Arizona. So we pray for him. Um, also, the family and friends of Nancy Ruff, Nancy died last Wednesday, and her funeral was here at Grace on Tuesday. And so the bouquets are, are from her funeral. So please keep Glenn, her husband Glenn, and her daughters in your prayers. Also her uh, daughter Christy, who is ill. So just a lot going on in that family, uh, all of our families, but please keep them in your prayers. So again, it's good to see all of you. God's blessings to you this day. And we'll begin with our opening hymn, number 856, O Christ who called the twelve. Follow you for 
forsaking old familiar ways for ventures bold and new. Grant us to hear your call to risk security and bound in heart and will to you find perfect liberty. O Christ who taught the twelve the truth for ages sealed whose words and works awaken faith the ways of God revealed instruct us now we pray by your empowering word true teacher before all who seek their light, their life, their Lord. O Christ, who led the twelve among the desolate and broke as bread of life for all your love compassionate lead us along the ways where hope has nearly died and help us climb the lonely hill where love is crucified oh Christ who sent the twelve on roads they'd never trod to serve, to suffer, teach, proclaim the nearer reign of God. Send us on ways where faith transcends to where love informs and hope sustains both life and ministry. O Christ, the Apostles, Lord, the martyr strength and song, the crucified and risen King, to whom the saints belong. No generations pass, our tribute still we bring, our hymns a sacrifice of praise, our lives and offerings. Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are feared. Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise, and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar. Let us first consider our unworthiness, and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take ref refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us. Forgive us our sins and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy... 
has given his son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy. For you judge the peoples with equity and guide the nations upon earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. The earth has yielded its increase. God, our God, shall bless us. God shall bless us. Let all the ends of the earth fear him. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning is now and will be forever. Amen. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. To God on high be glory and peace to all the earth. Good will from God in heaven proclaimed at Jesus' birth. We praise and bless you, Father. Your holy name we sing. Our thanks for your great glory, Lord God, our heavenly King. To you, O soul begotten, the Father, Son, we pray. O Lamb of God, our Savior, you take our sins away. Have mercy on us, Jesus. Receive our heartfelt cry. Where you in power are seated, at God's right hand on high. For you alone are holy, you only are the Lord. Forever and forever be worshipped and adored. You with the Holy Spirit, alone our Lord Most High, in God the Father's glory, Amen, our glad reply. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty, eternal God, in the word of your apostles and prophets, you have proclaimed to us your saving will. Grant us faith to believe your promises that we may receive eternal salvation. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, 
now and forever. Amen. 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 The Old Testament reading for the second Sunday after Pentecost is from Exodus chapter 19. The people of Israel set out from Rephidim and came into the wilderness of Sinai, and they encamped in the wilderness. There Israel encamped before the mountain, while Moses went up to God. The Lord called him out of the mountain, saying, Thus you shall say to the house of Jacob, and tell the people of Israel, You yourselves have seen what I did to the Egyptians, and how I bore you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. Now therefore, if you will indeed obey my voice and keep my covenant, you shall be my treasured possession among all peoples, for all the earth is mine. And you shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words that you shall speak to the people of Israel. So Moses came and called the elders of the people and set before them all these words that the Lord had commanded him. All the people answered together and said, All that the Lord has spoken we will do. And Moses reported the words of the people to the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is from Romans chapter 5. For while we were still weak, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. For one will scarcely die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person one would dare even to die. But God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Since therefore we have now been justified by his blood, much more shall we be saved by him from the wrath of God. For if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his Son, much more, now that we are reconciled, shall we be saved by his life. More than that, we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. Therefore, just as sin came into the world through one man, and death through sin, and so death spread to all men because all sinned, for sin indeed was in the world before the law was given, but sin is not counted where there is no law. Yet death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over those whose sinning was not like the transgression of Adam, who was a type of the one who was to come. But the free gift is not like the trespass. For if many died through one man's trespass, much more have the grace of God and the free gift by the grace of that one man, Jesus Christ, abounded for many. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. 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 These things are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the ninth and 10th chapters. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus went throughout all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom and healing every disease and every affliction. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore pray earnestly to the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. And he called to them his twelve disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal every disease and every affliction. The names of the twelve apostles are these. First, Simon, who is called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, 
Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew the tax collector, James the son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus, Simon the Cananean, and Judas Iscariot, who betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent out, instructing them, Go nowhere among the Gentiles and enter no town of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, and proclaim as you go, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse lepers, cast out demons. You received without paying, give without pay. Acquire no gold, nor silver, nor copper for your belts, no bag for your journey, nor two tunics, nor sandals, nor a staff, for the laborer deserves his food. And whatever town or village you enter, find out who is worthy in it and stay there until you depart. As you enter the house, greet it. And if the house is worthy, let your peace come upon it. But if it is not worthy, let your peace return to you. And if anyone will not receive you or listen to your words, shake off the dust from your feet when you leave that house or town. Truly I say to you, it will be more bearable on the day of judgment for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah than for that town. Behold, I am sending you out as sheep in the midst of wolves, so be wise as serpents and innocent as doves. Beware of men, for they will deliver you over to courts and flog you in their synagogues, and you will be dragged before governors and kings for my sake to bear witness before them and the Gentiles. When they deliver you over, do not be anxious how you are to speak or what you are to say, for what you are to say will be given to you in that hour. For it is not you who speak, but the Spirit of your Father speaking through you. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated. Our catechism reading is from the first article of the Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. What does this mean? I believe that God has made me and all creatures, that he has given me my body and soul, eyes, ears, and all my members, my reason and all my senses, and still takes care of them. This is most certainly true. Our next hymn is hymn 571, God loved the world so that he gave.
the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, three in one, to you, O blessed Trinity, be praise now and eternally. You may be seated. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The day, at least for me, almost went without notice. Um, just because of all the many other things going on in our world right now. But last Saturday, June 6th, was the 76th anniversary of of D-Day. That event that forever changed the course of World War II and really the history of the Western world ever since. When those brave soldiers from the United States and England and Canada and the Allied forces invaded um, across the English Channel, invaded uh, Normandy, France, fought on the beaches there, climbed the cliffs and, and won the victory that eventually led to the end of the war in Europe about a year later. Anyway, as I was reading through the gospel lesson for today, earlier in the week. I'm not sure why. Maybe it was because I did see something on the news about D-Day, but I thought of D-Day. And I I found some, at least for me, some maybe parallels. I don't know if I'm stretching things too much, but I saw some parallels between what happened then, 76 years ago, and what Jesus commissioned his disciples to do in our gospel lesson for today. So, I'll spend a few minutes trying to show the connections, at least as I see them. One, there were two armies. The army of D-Day, the Allied forces, hundreds of thousands of men strong. There was an army in our gospel lesson for today, too. Much smaller, though, just 12 at this point. Two, they had been enlisted, commissioned to do battle against evil. The men of D-Day, the evils of Nazi Germany and fascism that had overtaken Europe and many other parts of the world. The disciples of Jesus enlisted to, to do battle with Satan himself, to cast out demons, to heal the sick, proclaim the good news of the kingdom of God. Both leaders had, or sorry, both armies had a leader. The army of D-Day was uh, led by General Dwight D. Eisenhower, the supreme commander of the Allied Expeditionary Forces, later, of course, President Eisenhower. The army of our gospel lesson for today was led by the supreme leader, the King of kings and Lord of lords, Jesus Christ himself. And then finally, both armies, as it were, were given marching orders before they were to undertake their mission. We heard the marching orders of Jesus in our gospel lesson And I'll return to that in a moment, but I'd like to share with you what General Eisenhower said to his men the day before um, D-Day commenced. He wrote, Soldiers, sailors, and airmen of the Allied Expeditionary Force, you are about to embark upon the great crusade toward which we have striven these many months. The eyes of the world are upon you. The hope and prayers of liberty-loving people everywhere march with you. In company with our brave allies and brothers in arms on other fronts, you will bring about the destruction of the German war machine, the elimination of Nazi tyranny over the oppressed peoples of Europe, and security for ourselves in a free world. Your task will not be an easy one. 
Your enemy is well trained, well equipped, and battle hardened. He will fight savagely. But this is the year 1944. Much has happened since the Nazi triumphs of 1940 and 41. The United Nations have inflicted upon the Germans great defeats in open battle, man to man. Our air offensive has seriously reduced their strength in the air and their capacity to wage war on the ground. Our home fronts have given us an overwhelming superiority in weapons and munitions of war and placed at our disposal great reserves of trained fighting men. The tide has turned. The free men of the world are marching together to victory. I have full confidence in your courage, devotion to duty, and skill in battle. We will accept nothing less than full victory. Good luck, and let us beseech the blessing of Almighty God upon this great and noble undertaking. And so the men went off the next morning, and they won the victory. Not just them, but all those who fought in that great war, both in Europe and in the Pacific. The tide of history was turned. Fascism and all the evils that had come upon the world at that time were defeated. It came at great cost, though, as General Eisenhower warned his men. The task was not an easy one. The enemy was well-trained, well-equipped, and battle-hardened. Some 2,500 Americans died 76 years ago. Hundreds of thousands of others died in the course of that war. But they won. By God's grace, because of their valor, their heroism, we live as a free people, able to worship our God freely according to the dictates of our conscience and our beliefs. So we give thanks to God for them and for all those who fought in service of our country. General Eisenhower had full confidence in his men, as he said, But it turned out he wasn't so confident in himself and whether this mission would succeed. Not because of them, but there were many other factors he had to consider. It turned out that the weather that day wasn't very good, the weather forecast. And so there was talk of calling off the attack, the invasion, waiting another month, so that the tidal condition would be okay again, um, optimum to carry out this amphibious landing. But General Eisenhower was reluctant to wait another month lest the Germans get wind of what they were planning. So he went ahead with it. So on the same day that he wrote those marching orders to his men, he also wrote a much smaller statement just in case the D-Day invasion failed. And it read as follows. Our landings in the Cherbourg Hover, I'm not sure if that's how you pronounce it, area have failed to gain a satisfactory foothold and I have withdrawn the troops. My decision to attack at this time and place was based upon the best information available. The troops, the air, and the navy did all that bravery and devotion to duty could do. If any blame or fault attaches to the attempt, it is mine alone. Well, thanks be to God, he never had to issue this statement publicly. But I'm heartened as I read it. I talked last week in my sermon how we seem to be in an age where everyone wants to point fingers for all the problems that are going on in the world but General Eisenhower was ready and willing to accept the blame if this attack did not succeed. That's something all good leaders should be willing to do, to take responsibility for their actions, and something we should try to emulate in our own lives as well. Well, again, he didn't have to issue that statement. The attack was successful, and the course of history was changed. So now we return to the marching orders of Jesus 
in our gospel lesson for today. He himself was preparing his men to do battle with a vicious foe, a battle-hardened enemy, the devil himself, who had already inflicted great harm upon his people. It says that when Jesus saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. And so he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray earnestly to the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. But notice what he does. He not only tells them to pray that God would send out laborers, soldiers, as it were, into the harvest, but he sends them out. And as we heard, he gave them great authority, authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal every disease and every affliction. He told them to go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel and proclaim that the kingdom of heaven was at hand, that Jesus the King had come to make all things new. Like General Eisenhower, he warned his men that the battle would be hard, that the foe, as I said, was a tough, vicious one. Scripture says the devil is like a roaring lion lion seeking someone to devour. And so he warns them about what they are to face. Verse 16, Behold, I am sending you out as sheep in the midst of wolves. So be wise as serpents and innocent as doves. Beware of men, for they will deliver you over to courts and flog you in their synagogues, and you will be dragged before governors and kings for my sake to bear witness before them and the Gentiles. But like General Eisenhower, Jesus also encouraged his men. He continues, When they deliver you over, do not be anxious how you are to speak or what you are to say, for what you are to say will be given to you in that hour. For it is not you who speak, but the Spirit of your Father speaking through you. And so with that, off these twelve disciples went. The battle was hard. Church history tells us that of the twelve disciples, not counting Judas, who, as we know, betrayed Jesus and killed himself, of the eleven remaining disciples, ten of them were killed on, on account of their faith in Jesus. Peter, we're said, uh, are told, was crucified in Rome. He requested to be crucified upside down so that he wouldn't um, share the same honor as Jesus himself. The battle was tough, but they succeeded in the mission. That's what the book of Acts is about. It's a wonderful book. I've said it before, I just love St. Peter bold and brash. You know, I'll never deny you, Jesus, and yet he did. And yet Jesus restored him. And that he used that boldness and brashness and service to, to his kingdom. How two weeks ago we heard on Pentecost, Peter proclaimed, preached this great sermon of Jesus Christ crucified and risen for the sins of the world and by the power of the Holy Spirit working through these men the church grew and grew and grew. Some 3,000 souls became Christians that day on Pentecost. And the church continued on and on and on, even to this very day, even here in our beloved church. The church grew despite the difficulties and, and troubles and the fight um, that the devil waged against it because of course, these men, these soldiers, we ourselves, we don't fight with our own power or strength. But Jesus, our captain, our general, our leader, goes before us into the fray. He has won the victory. For all that happened, or Jesus said would happen to them, happened to him. He was arrested. He was imprisoned. He was beaten. He was mocked. He was crucified and killed and buried. But as we know, and as we hear in our epistle lesson for today, 
the death of Jesus proved to be the devil's own undoing. The Bible says God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. He died for us to pay for our sins and he rose again the third day that all who believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. My friends, as you know, as we've been living through these last several months and as we'll continue in the months to come, I'm sure, life in this world is hard. Life as a Christian is hard. We too suffer. Not just the physical problems of this world that are common to all men, but we too suffer at times on account of our faith. It is said, according to one study, that around the world, every year, 100,000 Christians are killed on account of their faith in Jesus. We give thanks to God that we haven't had to suffer that kind of persecution here in America, and we pray that we never will have to. But nonetheless, we know the battle is hard, the devil is relentless, but he cannot win. He has been defeated by Jesus. Unlike General Eisenhower, who felt compelled to write a just-in-case message in case the the invasion of D-Day didn't succeed. There was no need for Jesus to write such a message. Jesus promised his disciples and us that the gates of hell would not prevail against his church. Instead, Jesus says to you, be faithful unto death and I will give you the crown of life. And so I just want to encourage you, my friends, and thank you for your faithfulness, for your dedication and service to our Lord and to his kingdom. It's just one example you may have seen in the bulletin uh, today how we are blessed financially at this moment. The giving of our members has been wonderful in this time of crisis. Just one of the many ways in which God has worked through you to bless and sustain this church, to bless and sustain the proclamation of the gospel, which alone gives hope and healing to a world that's so broken right now. So thank you, my friends. May God bless you and your continued service. To him and to his kingdom, I am honored to serve with you as a fellow soldier in his army. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Please stand as we continue with the prayers. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. For the church and her witness of hope to the world, that in every city, village, and home across the globe, the voice of the Lord may be heard by the faithful preaching of the gospel. Lord, in your mercy, for those who labor in the fields of the Lord today, and for the Lord to raise up laborers for his harvest fields, that their work may be blessed and they may be protected and defended against the enemies of the kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, for all who live under the flag of our nation, for those who govern in this country, for the causes of peace and justice, and for an end to prejudice, hatred, and violence, that we may all be given grace and freedom to serve the Lord and our neighbor honorably and in accord with his word. Lord, in your mercy, for the poor and hungry, the homeless and unemployed, the persecuted and oppressed, that the Lord would grant them mercy and that we may help to relieve their suffering and want. Lord, in your mercy, for the members of our congregation, including those who are celebrating birthdays this week, especially Elsie Squires as she celebrates her 93rd birthday, as well as the families on our prayer list, 
namely the families of James Hurth, Joshua Hurth, and Justin Hurth. We also pray for safe travel for our youth and chaperones who are traveling to Kentucky today. Lord, in your mercy, for the sick, that the Lord would grant them healing, for the wounded in spirit, that the Lord would make them whole, and for the grieving, that the Lord would comfort them, especially all affected by the ongoing pandemic and its effects. We pray especially for healing for Tom Clark, for Jackson Woodward as he recovers from surgery, for Walter Bone as he recovers from a shoulder injury, for Derek Gardner as he recovers from heat exhaustion, for Glenn and Nancy Ruff's daughter Christy who is ill, for the family and friends of Nancy Ruff as they mourn her death, and for all those we name quietly in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, for the dying, that they may have peace at the last, and for our grateful remembrance of all those who have died in Christ, that in the fullness of time the Lord may bring us with them into his everlasting presence, where sin and death will trouble us no more. Lord, in your mercy, and for all who come to the Lord's table today, that they may receive the Lord's body and blood in faith and rejoice in his gift of forgiveness the renewal of their life, and the promise of the eternal feast to come. Lord, in your mercy, into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. our service on page 208. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Everlasting God for the countless blessings you so freely bestow on us in all creation. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh and laid on him our sin, giving him into death that we might not die eternally. Because he is now risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity, all who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Holy, holy Lord, God of Sabaoth adored, heaven and earth with full acclaim, shout the glory of your name. Sing Hosanna in the highest, sing Hosanna to the Lord. Truly blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of all creation, for you have had mercy on us. 
and given your only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. In your righteous judgment, you condemn the sin of Adam and Eve, who ate the forbidden fruit, and you justly barred them and all their children from the tree of life. Yet in your great mercy, you promised salvation by a second Adam, your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and made his cross a life-giving tree for all who trust in him. We give you thanks for the redemption you have prepared for us through Jesus Christ. Grant us your Holy Spirit, that we may faithfully eat and drink of the fruits of his cross and receive the blessings of forgiveness, life, and salvation that come to us in his body and blood. Hear us as we pray in his name and as he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. O oh, Jesus Christ, true Lamb of God, you take the sin of the world away. O oh, Jesus Christ, true Lamb of God, have mercy on us, Lord, we pray. Jesus Christ, true Lamb of God, you take the sin of the world away. And see on us, Jesus Christ. Welcome to the Lord's table. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and drink the blood of Christ shed for you. And now this true body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in body and soul to life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. Welcome to the Lord's table. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. 
Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. And now this true body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in body and soul to life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. Welcome to the Lord's table. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Our Lord Jesus, bless and keep you in the life of your baptism till the day of his coming. Amen. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. May our Lord Jesus bless and keep you both in the life of your baptism till the day of his coming. Amen. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. The Lord Jesus bless and keep you in the life of your baptism until the day of his coming. Amen. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and drink the blood of Christ shed for you. Take and drink the blood of Christ shed for you. And now this true body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in body and soul to life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. Welcome to the Lord's table. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and drink the blood of Christ shed for you. Take and drink the blood of Christ shed for you. Take and drink the blood of Christ shed for you. Take and drink the blood of Christ shed for you. you. 
And now this true body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in body and soul to life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. Welcome to the Lord's table. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Oh. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and drink the blood of Christ shed for you. Take and drink the blood of Christ shed for you. And now this true body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in body and soul to life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. Welcome to the Lord's table. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. And now this true body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in body and soul to life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. Spirit, 
forever three in one. For as in the beginning is now shall ever be, God's triune name resounding through all eternity. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same, in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Let us bless the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. We conclude with our closing hymn, number 827, Hark the Voice of Jesus Calling. Jesus calling, who will go and work today? Fields are white and harvest waiting, who will bear the sheaves away? Loud and long the master calleth, rich reward he offers thee. Who will answer gladly, saying, Here am I, send me, send me. Some take up his task in mourning, To their Lord responding soon. Some are called in heat of midday, Others late in afternoon. Even as the sun is setting, some are sent into the fields, there to gather in the bounty that God's word so richly yields. For as rain and snow from heaven water seeds in dusty soil, causing them to bud and flower, giving bread to those who toil, so the Lord sends forth his promise Words of life and joy and peace Never void to him returning Bearing fruit with great increase Hearken to the Lord who's coming Marks the time when grace shall end when with his angelic reapers he in glory shall descend. Soon the night, the final harvest, soon the time for work shall cease. Then the souls his grace has garnered shall enjoy his Sabbath peace.